Hey, welcome back to True Moto Resto. This is episode four of the ZX7 restoration. Please subscribe. Very much appreciate all the support. And uh, in this video, we're gonna get into, uh, finally, I think, uh, painting the frame. I thought we might do that in the previous video, but I'm trying to keep them a little bit shorter and more interesting. So uh, frame painting this time, and uh, probably uh, things like fork rebuild coming up soon, and a few other exciting and interesting things. So uh, stay tuned. <laughs> So now we're using a high build primer. So we started with the uh, with etching primer, self etching primer, and now I'm onto high build. So this is the uh, this is the primer I use, Proform high build primer. Ideally, I would be using a I would say a, a catalyzed reduced primer and a spray gun, but I do all the priming here at home, and uh, there's just no place to. To do it so that's why i go to my buddy's place he's got a professional booth there but i can't run back and forth priming sanding priming sanding there so i do it here so unfortunately it's right in my bike shop where i do all the other work the good thing is this stuff dries so quickly by the time it if it does make it over to the bikes it's just dust so all i gotta do is wipe the bikes off okay first coat of high build is on um, and you might think, well, why do you even need to bother priming the whole thing? I mean, it's a silver frame, it's gonna get painted silver again. Well, there's kind of three reasons for that. So one is areas that I go down to bare metal, I need the etch primer, and then I just put the primer filler over top of that. Um, second is when you get a few imperfections from scratches and that kind of stuff in the frame, the, the, the high build primer helps to fill in some of that stuff so you get a better finish when you sand a few layers of the, of the primer down. And thirdly, sometimes when you are when you go to shoot the final uh, you know, color coat, um, and then you start, if you experience some fish eyes or something starts to happen with the finish where maybe there was a little bit of uh, oil or grease or something like that that you didn't get off properly, um, I don't want to find that when I'm in the paint booth uh, putting on that final color coat. I'd rather find it here when I'm shooting the primer on there and I can go back and fix it. There's my rationale. This is what I have learned. My experience has told me. And you could say, well, you're just shitty at cleaning the surface as well. Maybe. Okay, wheels. Cleaning and prepping for paint. So this is, again, another, another place where... I find I have to do a lot of scrubbing, a lot of degreasing. The place that I have had the most trouble with paint fish eyes is on wheels. Um, probably a lot, especially on the rear wheel because of all the uh, the chain uh, grease and spatter that gets thrown up. And even when I think I've cleaned the living daylights out of it, um, it still, you end up getting those little fish eyes from time to time. So what I, what I do now, um, is I use again Scotch Brite pads, pieces of Scotch Brite soaked in the uh, wax remover, degreaser. I mean, I've got a couple of different brands here. This is another one that's for bail from Duplicolor. And I uh, clean everything in brake clean first and acetone, and then I go over the whole thing. I wipe it down with Duplicolor uh, or with any sort of degreaser, wax remover, toothbrush. Um, toothbrush is important to get into, especially when you've got kind of embossed uh, raised lettering or whatever you want to call it uh, on the spokes to get all the dirt out and trying to get into these corners down in here and then uh, I use that degreaser uh, soak one of these guys a little uh, scotch bright pad 3m pad whatever and then scrub and uh, the paint not factory powder coat I would assume because this stuff comes off really really easily so you can see here, it just scrubs right off. So <clears throat> and what I'll do is same as on the frame, I'm gonna put some etching primer on these, uh, partly because we're down to bare metal and partly because I really wanna know and be sure that there's no issues with uh, contamination of the surface where I'm gonna get fish eyes when I get to the paint booth. 
Yeah, well, I spoke too soon on the, uh, yeah, it's easy to get the paint off. It is on the factory wheel and the factory finish, but the front wheel has been repainted and clear coated. Um, it's, it, uh, it's a, it's a brute to get off. I mean, you can't, the, uh, the scrubbing pads, the 3M scotch brights or whatever, don't do a single thing against, uh, this really. So you've got to now take the sandpaper to it. You can tell it's clear coated. It's actually a run. I'm making my way through this slowly. It's, uh, not fun. Okay, your wheels are sanded. I'm going to etch prime the wheels. Uh, and if you're wondering why I'm not taking wheels and frames to be powder coated, it's a very simple reason. It's because the powder coater in our area sucks. That's to put it mildly. I have I've had three motorcycle frames powder coated by the place and all three I had to send back to be stripped and then I ended up uh, painting them with the uh, base clear. The job was that bad. It was lumpy. It was looked like it had been put on with a stucco gun, one of them. Uh, it was just uh, like a rough finish instead of smooth. It was just an absolute mess. So I only use them now for media blasting. Um, every time I've tried the powder coating, it's, uh, it's just a dog's breakfast. Okay, we've got all the uh, grommets and hardware removed off all the bodywork. All the brackets, all that kind of good stuff is gone. So then the next step is we're going to start stripping decals off. Well, another frosty and snowy morning in Northern Ontario, Canada. I just spent the last hour and a half blowing snow. Okay, I'm going to show you two different kinds of uh, plastic repair today. Um, I've just removed the decal, the ZX7 decal off the uh, tail seat panel. And the uh, first thing I'm going to do is use the uh, adhesive cleaner to get rid of all of this uh, adhesive. This is, this is the adhesive from the decal and this is the adhesive from that ghastly uh, turn signal that somebody had drilled a hole in here to mount. Unbelievable. Anyway, uh, so that adhesive's all got to get cleaned off. Um, and then I also have to fix this crack here. So I'm going to show you the two different ways I use. I'm going to plastic weld this, and then I'm going to use a product in here called Plastex. All right, so the first, uh, first thing I'm going to do I'm going to repair the crack first. This is obviously the back side. So um, using a Dremel tool, I'm going to clean out and kind of V-groove the back here a little bit. The other thing that I have to do is, I forgot here, on these little nubs, whatever you call them. The uh, These are the ones that push into the grommets on the frame. Uh, one has snapped off from over here, and then this one is missing. So I'm going to make one for here using this uh, to cast a mold, and I'll show you how I do that as well. I do not have a fancy welder. What I do have is a very, very inexpensive soldering iron. It's a digital soldering iron off Amazon. It's very, very cheap, but it works quite well. It's got, a, it's got a temperature readout on it. You can move the temperature up or down. It works quite well. And then I buy, some people use zip ties, I guess. I don't. I use either pieces of old fairing or I use this, which is plastic welding rod. <laughs> and that's just a case of melting the two together. The idea to wear a mask of some sort when you're doing this because do it in a well ventilated area because it the fumes are quite nasty. <laughs>
Sometimes you're just gonna kinda gotta remember where the crack is. It gets a little hard to see it sometimes. And the idea is to kind of melt through at least 50% on each side, so then you've, you've completely repaired the entire area. <laughs> So uh, next thing I'm going to do is see if I can make a mold to reproduce one of these. And the product I'm going to use for that is the same thing I'm going to use to fill the hole. It's called uh, Plastex. So basically what you get with the Plastex kit is you get this liquid. You get powder. This powder happens to be black, but you can get it in clear and white and a few other colors. You get an applicator bottle with the needle, and then you get uh, and then you get you put the powder in these little containers. It makes it easy to uh, to dispense it, and there's different ways you can you can do it. And then they also give you this is kind of a galled up uh, piece of modeling uh, plastic. I used it to make a different uh, tab for another repair uh, a while ago. So basically, you heat this up and it becomes pliable and moldable. And you can then kind of shape it around this. And then once this is cooled, you take this out and then you have a mold that you can pour plastics powder and liquid into and, and basically reproduce this item. So that's what I'm gonna do. been heated enough that it's getting very pliable but she's hot very 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 hot so you can tell by the way I'm trying to move this stuff around that it's not particularly comfortable on my fingers so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shape try and make sure I get this on camera I'm going to mold this thing around Try to get the right, the right shape there. So I've got to make sure that it really is properly formed around. So there, now that can sit for a little while while it cools off, and then once it's cool, I have the interesting task of getting that piece of plastic ABS the nub out of the molding bar. Somebody's drilled a hole in here, as I said, for uh, those nasty stick-on turn signals. So this is where they put the wire through, so it's it's got to get removed. All I've done is just clean out the inside of the hole, so I'm back to clean. Uh, ABS plastic and then I've chamfered the edge of the hole so that the repair liquid has a has a good a good purchase on there when, uh, when I pour it in so I'm going to put a piece of foil tape on the back of there so I just find the uh, this sort of sticky foil tape it, it's very very sticky and it does a really good job in stopping the, the liquids from bleeding through. So now, what we have here, this is the, the powder. This is the Plastex powder. And this is the Plastex liquid. Now, you can do it a couple of ways. You can just kind of spoon the powder into the hole with a screwdriver or something like that, whatever you can use to scoop it up with. And then you can drip the liquid on with this, or you can can use the uh, the 
the drip and blob method, as I call it. So basically you just drip in there and then you pick it up and then you place it on the hole. You squeeze a bit more liquid in. Once it's been dry for about an hour, it's it's dry enough that it, you could actually, if it's like this is going to be over top of the, the surface, obviously. So you can take a razor blade and you can just shave off the top layer and then just go to work with your normal uh, surface body filler after. Okay, so we're going to try to start uh, extracting this. Uh, lug nub whatever you want to call it from the molding bar see if we can get it out <laughs> Inside there, maybe. And there will be some rough spots in the. Do a little bit at a time, that way you don't have issues with the liquid penetrating the powder. Making sure that I've got enough height on this lug or that it's the right properly. So there you go. You can see uh, basically I just filled the mold up right to the top. And now I gotta set that somewhere kind of level so that it doesn't all kind of leak out on me. Leave it till tomorrow. And then I should have another one of these. Okay, so it is the next day. And this is the, uh, the new nub for the, uh, the missing one on the fairing that I cast out of the, uh, the plastics kit. So they're a little bit difficult to get out just because of the shape, but uh, you kind of work at it for a few minutes and you get there. Um, so yeah, now it just needs to be trimmed and smooth off in the base and then I can determine how much of that I have to grind off to get the proper fit on the uh, the panel and I have back in the mold as the second one because I was missing two and that'll stay there now until tomorrow and then that's that'll be all the missing uh, lugs that have been uh, recreated so there you go okay the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to weld this uh, broken lug back on here. So I have decided I'm taking uh, all of this OEM foam off the inside of the, uh, of the panel and reason being um, this stuff is so deteriorated that I just, if I just move the panel and I just turn it like upside down, this is what it leaves. It just falls off. And so whenever, whenever you have air movement, for instance, this stuff is just going to be everywhere. So when I'm, when I'm in the paint booth eventually, if I, if I leave this stuff on, this stuff is going to get everywhere. It's going to get into the paint. So as much as I would like to have OEM foam on the inside, I don't want to have OEM deteriorating foam on the inside. So I'm going to clean all of this right off. Can I show you one more uh, repair? So this is the, the one fairing that I have that has had some damage in the past. This has been repaired, crack here with some sort of epoxy and mesh it's held up okay 
Um, but this piece of the duct was missing on the inside here, this the darker blackish color. So what I'm actually doing is I made the uh, I made a template off the other side um, for the missing piece, and now basically I'm just kind of where you see here, I'm just kind of stitching that in so it holds. And then I'm going to go back and uh, plastic weld that in place and then it can be shaped and filled and smoothed out. So by the time that is smoothed off, it'll look as good as new. Okay, first coat of silver base is on. A couple more minutes, I'm gonna do another, another coat of base, and then uh, and then we'll clear coat it. There we go. The clear coat is on. I think it's gonna have just probably just about the right amount of glossy finish to it. We only did one coat of clear. I just did one. Figured that way it's not going to be overly shiny. So just brought all the frame parts back from the paint shop and I'll let these sit now for a uh, better part of the rest of this week before I start playing with them. Just let the paint cure and fully cure and harden up. So I think that's going to be about it for this video. And uh, the next video, I think I'm gonna do the gas tank repair, get the rest of the bodywork ready for paint. I know I keep saying I'm gonna do the forks, but I haven't got around to doing the forks yet. So that'll be in an upcoming video, but uh, yeah, watch out for the gas tank repair coming up. A little bit nervous about that. I've gotta do some soldering and heating on the fuel tank. So I've gotta to try to get that uh, to a safe point before I uh, launch myself headlong into that one. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe and we'll talk to you in the next video.